They need some really nice things. Better be coming with no strings. Better be coming with no strings. We need some really nice things. Joined the Marines back in 1996. Went into the Navy as a Navy corpsman. Uh, in the network market industry, are north of $30 billion. Travel services to health and wellness. Yes, it depends on the person's mindset. Yes, it depends on the person's work ethic. The focus has to be on building teams. We're talking about down there close to hundreds and hundreds of people on your team to make some money. And we just crossed over $152,000 in the insurance industry. There's about the 10 reasons why network marketers are choosing the insurance industry. What's crack collecting, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Movement headquarters. We are just back from a private, national private jet tour uh, from last week, and a conversation uh, was coming up between all the different tour stops because so many people are getting involved in so many different businesses, franchises. A lot of people are asking me about network marketing, MLM. So there's about the 10 reasons why network marketers are choosing the insurance industry. And I'm very excited today because I got some gentlemen here joining with me on the show. One is actually right here next to me in Chicago in our Oprah office. He's from Chicago, also a United States Marine Corps veteran. He was an instructor at the School of Infantry. So I got on the show here, Mr. Chris McCoy, man. I'm glad you're here. Hey, thank you for having me. And also with me too as well from, from Annapolis is a gentleman by the name of, you, you see his Lawrence, but we, we call him Bill. I don't know where Lawrence came from, but, <laughs> but uh, Bill Corman uh, comes to us, also a military veteran and instructor at the uh, Naval Academy. So we're going to be discussing why, why people get involved in network marketing and why people are saying, you know what, let me consider an industry like the life insurance industry to translate and make a lateral move with my skills. So there you are, Bill Corman. How you doing, brother? Doing great, brother. Well, well, welcome to the uh, welcome to the conversation. Oh, thank you, thank you, thanks for having me. By the way, if you guys are watching this towards the end of this video, watch this video until the entirety. And I'm gonna give you some details because we got some goals. We want to reach twenty thousand on our Facebook business page, and if you're watching this on YouTube, we're looking at ten thousand YouTube subscribers, and I'd love to have your help on it, reaching those goals. Twenty thousand on Facebook and ten thousand on YouTube, and watch to the entirety of the show because I want to give you an opportunity to win a set of. Cut Custom Jordans, money smart movement, money smart guy on it. So I'm gonna give you an, an opportunity to win, but we gotta hit those benchmarks first. I need you to help me share this video. Share it on Facebook. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you share it also from your YouTube channel. So let's get, let's get right into it. So uh, Chris, since you're right here, let's let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about your, about your military background and also your involvement with network marketing. Joined the Marines back in 1996 uh, as an 0311, that's infantry for, uh, for Marines. Um, done that from 96 to about 98, and then I decided to you know, go further into my career. So I became a SOI instructor. Uh, once I got out of the Marines, you know, I uh, took some little out end jobs, didn't really know what I really uh, wanted to, uh, to do. Uh, I've done, you know, uh, we got worked at a factory, you know, things like that until I came across, you know, sales. All right. And uh, once I came across sales, direct sales, I was selling vacuum cleaners. <laughs> wait, 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 we selling we send Kirby's or uh, uh, Electrolux. 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 <laughs> okay, that's old school right there. All right. In the meantime, I met a person, you know, who's in network marketing and I just saw, you know, the, the good of it. You know, he brought me to his house huge house big lawn saying he'd make about 10 15 20 thousand dollars what i was making a year he was probably making a month you know so i wanted to be part of that life and network marketing provided that solution or or the opportunity i should say uh to in order to go about doing that very good bill let's, let's go to you talk to us about about your your service and also your um, your involvement in the network marketing industry. I uh, grew up in uh, in a military family. My stepdad was in the military, so it led me to to join um, join the military. My family, my mom had already prescribed I was going to be a doctor, so I'm like, ah, I choose a different route. I want my I want my own route. So I went into the Navy as a Navy corpsman. Uh, Twenty years in the Navy, I spent with the Marines. Uh, I was FMF corpsman, Marine Corps regs. Got to do some incredible stuff. Everywhere the Marines go, they take a doc with them. So so it was incredible. Still incredible friends. Friendships, uh, partnerships today. Uh, so along the way, in the military, being enlisted, trying to raise a family, mm -hmm. right? The, let's say the uh, the financial benefit is not as big as it could be. And my brother-in-law actually introduced me to network marketing. So he introduced a company, one of the powerhouses in the industry for for many many years. 
Uh, we were part of that company for almost, uh, almost 11, 12 years. Uh, took a long time, but then eventually we did okay. I got approached by a gentleman who asked me to get involved with reviewing and analyzing compensation plans in the network marketing MLM industry. Along the way, what I found, there's very, very big, huge differences in the network marketing, depending on the company. We all have the same similar experience. We're in the military, we're serving our country, but the paycheck just isn't enough. Uh, whether you're in the military, especially after the military, it's just not enough. So we're always looking for things to do on the side, especially when you're back in the rear with the gear, assuming that you're not forward deployed. So here's some facts here, and I got this from, and here's my source, mlmattorney.com. Here, here's some facts from their website. More than 55,000 people in the United States sign up a week as network marketers. That's 150,000 per week worldwide. In excess of 13 million people alone in the United States are become distributors for network marketing companies. In other words, that's one out of 10 households having a direct seller. Uh, 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 in the United States, sales uh, in the network marketing industry are north of $30 billion. 75% of all network marketing distributors um, are women. Men account for 25%. 80% uh, of network marketers are part-time and 20% are full-time who put uh, 30 more hours a week more into the business. And here, here, here's the interesting thing. About 3% of all network marketers make 35,000 a year. 2% will make more than 50,000. A half a percent will make more than a hundred grand. 0.1% will make more than 150 a year. Interesting. Uh, there's a large multicultural demographic with inside network marketers, and a lot. 66% of people are between 25 and 44 years old. So, guys, let's let's jump right into it. Um, Bill, let's start with you. What what attracted you about compensation when it comes to network marketing? Um, so I got approached by many many different companies, and and I learned um, from my. Uh, from my leadership to say, listen, if you want to, you want to compare apples to apples, show me your comp plan, um, because there is a massive, massive disparities as, as you just went over the stats about what people make in the industry. Um, so for me, studying the comp plan leads you down the road. Is this going to be successful? And so I evaluate everything from, from, uh, from travel services to health and wellness to, um, you know, and the one that I, that I, uh, the last one I came across, which was, uh, interesting was financial services. And it blew me away because I had not studied any, <laughs> any of the comp plans and financial services. And when I was approached by it to take a look at it, I was like, this can't be right. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what about you, Chris? Why, why network marketing for you? You know, the opportunity to make the money, you know, now compensation wise and everything else like that, they'll tell you, OK, if you go ahead and do X, you'll get Y. If you go ahead and do why and bring in you know x amount of people or et cetera et cetera et cetera you'll end up getting this uh type of money at the end of the day as you was going through the stats you know those margins starts to come to play as far as those who are successful and those who are failing interesting interesting so so uh, let's let's go back and what we'll, we'll, we'll go one each with you guys so bill let's start with you yes. um we got some talking points here some here's some reasons we got 10 reasons why network marketers considered making a move why you've made a move to the insurance industry so uh, number one, you talked about flag. You talked about flagship products versus the deal of the month. Instead of being in the industry of building people and building a system, they focus you on a lot of those other companies on learning the product of the month, right, and becoming a product knowledge expert instead of instead of building you know, a network, uh, you know, of people. What, what about you, Chris? You you say you know you love financial products versus just simple consumer products. Can you mm -hmm. explain that? Right, absolutely. Because you know, along with products, you know, that kind of leads to many uh, choices. You know, because yes, people could become emotional to attach to physical products, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, guess what? Bills gonna keep on going, and it depends on that that individual situation. You know, sooner or later, you're gonna be like, okay, do I pay my bill or do I? you know, you know, leave my tea for, for the day. Okay. <laughs> do I pay my, you know, uh, my cell phone bill or, Hey, does this skin cream really, is it really that important for me to spend $80 for a little one ounce uh, bottle of skin cream? Cause the majority, uh, and Bill, correct me if I'm wrong with your guys' experience, a majority of the network marketing companies I see and I experience, I get hit up on a lot of them is health and wellness. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so it's, in other words, the the insurance industry is providing a product for you that's a little bit more tangible than a protein drink. Didn't you forget something? What? Your secret stuff. Absolutely. A little bit more. Would you agree with that, too, Bill? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Okay, so Bill, you talk about uh, the balance of actually helping somebody uh, make money and not getting distracted by other things. What did you mean by that? So what happens is, is that um, in to, if you're going to build a successful network marketing business in any industry, the focus has to be on building teams. It has to be building people. The problem is, is in most industries, it's a company who manufactures products instead of instead of buying advertising, they build a distribution team. And so you get distracted chasing this one, then this cream was better. Now this one's packaged better. It's got a prettier label. This one's got a new ingredient in it. So you're constantly distracted by from the important thing, which is if people are following you or getting involved for financial freedom, you need to teach them how to duplicate themselves. And when they're following every day learning about new product changes, it just doesn't work. So, um, Chris, you talked about low success rate. You know, mm -hmm. we, we talked about the success rate. We, we talked about uh, um, uh, uh, a lot of people just don't make enough uh, to, 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 to pay the bills and make a living. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I was found on that. Uh, usually what that means is that, you know, sometimes with most of these companies that's out there, you know, yes, you have those few that's out there um, making the money it will have you. But when you go to these, you know, little meetings and things like that, it's almost the same type of folks. But what about the average Joe and Jane? And sometimes these companies in their struck and how they're structured, it's not tailored to them. You know what I'm saying? So that's where you get that whole revolving door action going in. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it depends on the person's mindset. Yes, it depends on the person's work ethic. But then again, you're only dealing with the cars that's dealt with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bring that shit on, man. Oh, God, I you understand if that makes sense? Yeah. You know, so it's kind of hard for, again, the average Joe and Jane to really try to get ahead, you know, versus the person who's done it for years or who has a massive following, et cetera, et cetera based off of what that company has already structured for that. Yeah. So that's why you have that, once again, that revolving door action. Let, let's, let's speak, because I know there's a lot of people tuning in right now. There's some people watching. Well, what, who are these guys? I mean, uh, who, who's Chris McCoy? Who's who's Bill Corman? From an income, let's talk about your success real quick. So Chris, you just got started with this. Yeah. So so uh, what'd you earn this week? Yes, sir, I mean, $1,800. You so know. You're, you're, you're brand new at this. brand new at this. That's the first time ever in this industry. You know, yes, I knew some marketing, but the insurance game, very, very, very new. This one right here is very, you know, uh, it, it holds a, a special place because think about what I've done in the past or so the history of these past companies. Do you know what I actually had to do in order just to get a check with a comma? You know how many people I have to have on the team? To make 1800 bucks. To make $1,800. Mm -hmm. We're talking about down there close to hundreds and hundreds of people on your team to make some money with commas in it. You know, with this, you know, I wow. talked to a, a couple clients. Yeah, Bill, talk to us about you, man. What was what's been your success rate the last eleven months, ten months? <laughs> well, it took me uh, by the present company it took me about four or five months to come on board because I I literally could not understand that compensation plan, how there was that much money there. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna give us a word. I believe in network marketing. So we got started. Our first check was uh, June, the first week of June last year. Um, and we just crossed over $152,000 in, in so basically 11 months in it's the insurance well, industry. In, in, in the insurance industry, yeah, it's it's been it's been it's been absolutely insane. So my last check, 20 years in the Navy as a chief petty officer, not counting the other allowances, which really don't count. But my 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 regular pay, I just made three times in 11 months what it took me 20 year career in the Navy to do, and it's coming in a good percentage of it past the residual amount. Yeah, so you're both guys, you both of you are making money by teaching people about money, mm -hmm. right? And so, uh, you know, that goes into the, you know, your guys' pro you know, find your products conversation, flagship products, et cetera. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. So uh, let's talk about uh, retention. You know, uh, what do you mean by retention? So um, so the retention is so uh, people come across your opportunity or you or you um, you expose them to your business opportunity, whatever the industry is. And what happens is, is that no matter how much people like the products or trust you or like the service, at the end of the day, they're there to provide a financial change for them and their family. And when they don't see that money coming in after one, two, three, six, 12 months, they're gone. Right. And so so that's what I found in the other industries. I was with, when I studied those comp plans, I said, listen, you've got to put a lot more incentives in these bonus pools because if people are not making money right away, they're gone. You know, I want to add. I want to add, add another point here because I'm just thinking about this too, real quick. Because I'm thinking about competition in our industry. You know, I'm I'm thinking about competition in any business, in any industry, and because of the insurance industry shifting their methods of distribution more to independent contractors, more to companies like PHP Agency, and I'm thinking about competition to guys in a network marketing industry because it's not like you guys lose business. I mean. 
you guys are in the insurance industry now. What, how many times have you lost business to Allstate, to the bank, to, to, to New York Life? How many times do you lose business to other competitors in our industry? We take business with them all the time. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> the way around. You know, they, they, you know, clients are love what we what we do, what we offer, and we take business for them all the time because not only we have better products and a large group of companies to offer, but we service them. You know, and so so let's flip that around the network marketing industry. And I just I just mentioned that earlier that majority of the network marketing companies I've seen, I've experienced, are health and wellness based. They've got to have big companies. Like, why would I do business with you versus me just going on Amazon or Whole Foods to, to get a healthy a healthier type of product? How how, how does that playing to you guys right i mean for uh, for me i mean i can speak on that especially because i used to um do the whole e-commerce thing as well and that's what used to be one of the things to deter people from you know a product-based business because okay why should i spend 50 to 60 dollars on this product when i can go to ebay or amazon and get it for a fraction of the darn price along with right. that you know and you know that goes along i mean that's one of the what the one of the biggest things again that revolving door of retention that people going through in that network marketing space is that once again if people come in and they don't make money within a certain period of time or they have the little shining ball syndrome or whatever the case it may be or whatnot then they're gone so when they of course when they leave guess what that does affect your pockets tremendously um you know uh, eventually down the road bill what would you say what would you say to that brother so it's very interesting so the company i left um i was a founder i had founder shares in when i got approached for, about php um, and one of the conversation I had with the founder, the other founders, the board members is that they called their company, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the name out, but it was based on a book called Blue Ocean Strategies, right? Okay. Talks about red red ocean markets, blue ocean markets, right? So Amazon, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Apple created a, um, a blue ocean market where, you know, people stand in line for four or five hours overnight to get a new product, right? When a new phone comes out. And so what happens is that the opposite as a red ocean market where there's so many people competing, right? For market share in a market space, right? That you're trying to become the, the you know, uh, pick me, pick me because I've got something special. And what you, exactly what you said, with Amazon and e-commerce, it's all, all, of, all of health and wellness right now is a bloody red ocean because there's so much competition out there. And like I said, Amazon can squash it. Uh, let's let's talk about this one. You were talking about this uh, earlier, uh, Chris. Higher revenue per sale, higher <laughs> revenue per transaction in the insurance industry versus you. Both, both of you guys are smiling. <laughs> yeah, <that's> exactly. <laughs> Remember, I mentioned before that eighteen hundred for two or three clients versus you know you power up a company and you got to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people you know that's on auto ship to even try to come close to that. You know, and that's once again with PHP and this insurance agency, you know, if I'm going to do the same thing and that was my whole decision making, you know, when I came here, if I'm going to do the same thing that I'm doing, I'd rather get more bang for my buck. All right. Because, yes, money is good, but also the time as well. Bill, what, what has been your experience in terms of this this uh, uh, talking point here, which is higher revenue per sale? Yeah. So I was just doing some quick calculation. But so, for example, the the uh, the commissions we made in April. Uh, in, in the industry I was in before, uh, the company I was with before, you'd have to have about 120,000 clients to make what? that kind of money. 120,000 clients to make uh, $47,000 uh, in, in income in a month. Let, let's talk about this. What about auto ship in the insurance industry? Let's say somebody's, man, I got an overabundance of savings. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the bad thing. I, I have an over, my money's growing, my money's stacking up. <laughs> yep, that that's our auto ship in in, the, in this industry. Yeah, we're right. We're, we're we're helping you build massive cash. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. instead of massive inventory, inventory. that's that that it's expires. There. So when I so when I left the company, I was with eleven years. We had so much inventory on hand from buying over to hit promotions each month. I had a I had a fifteen hundred square foot workshop. It was lined with shelves of product, and yeah. so it took me about nine to ten months to try to sell off some of that inventory but that's that that's how that industry is 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 designed right you have to to hit promotions and things like that you've got to do it if it's not coming in from your team you buy extra and you know i mean it's just mm -hmm. we're here you know auto ship and you get people complaining about you know i try to cancel my order all this stuff here here we, we put somebody on, on on you know put somebody on monthly premium and they're calling you thanking you you know and i just checked my app my cash keeps going up 
Bill, uh, let's, let's, talk, let's get, go back to you. You talked about earlier uh, about a higher barrier to entry. Yes. Uh, that, that if you're, you know, if you're recruiting and building a team in the insurance industry, there's a higher barrier to enter, to the to this industry. Explain that. So, um, so in this in the, the uh, in this industry, obviously, um, you, it's a professional service industry, so you have to have a license. Um, and so there's a screening process for that. Um, they're you know a little more skin in the game. We're very selective on who we can bring on. We tell people all the time, I can't promise you anything. Why? Because there's a there there is a regulatory component to it, a screening process to that. In the other companies I was involved in, if you had a pulse, they, they would say, "Hey, I'll hold the pen. You move the paper, right? <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, get them, get them, get them signed up as a as an IBO or distributor." Here, I, the thing I love about it is that we're very selective. Uh, we work with clients who go into people's homes, and so it's a higher barrier uh, to entry, which is good. Yeah, one hundred percent, absolutely. Yeah, that's huge, right? Yeah, that's huge, right there. Because just like he uh, mentioned, you know, you working with a, a a core group of individuals, you know, who could get the work done. When everybody has a core group and have a like minded, you got yourself a Navy SEAL team yeah. <laughs> out there, you know, getting things done, and just a few people who can just dominate the figures that. The people in the network market industry are doing right now another point here you guys mentioned that this is a career as well as a business you know one of the litmus factors that i've mentioned to network marketers that have approached me one of the litmus factors for me is to say listen if 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 your team quits because I've, I've i've recruited teams and built teams in the insurance industry and what has always kept my, my lights on and my business open is that even if my team quits even if i recruit a sales force a recruit a sales team and they get recruited by somebody else or they just quit. I, with my individual pin, can still pay my bills with my own personal effort and keep my business alive. Uh, and when you guys mentioned that this, this is a career as well as a business, can you guys expand on that? Chris, why don't yes. we start with you? Yes, yeah, so most definitely. You know, in the network marketing space, you know, yes, if let's say your team just leaves, okay, and you're okay, now I have to, now it's up to me. Now I have to go out there and push, you know, lotions and potions and diet creams and things like that. But guess what? Depending on how that company is structured, you still put in a whole bunch of lot of work, you know, and getting that little commission and versus, you know, if I'm over here and let's just say, you know, my team just, you know, hey, Chris, it's not for me or I, I want to go part time or that was OK. I just don't want to do anything at all. I'm still have the opportunity to still go out there with my personal pen and still make as much or even more than I did with myself and my team. That's huge. Bill, what's what's your experience on that? So, so yeah, absolutely. For, for me, the same thing. We have this powerful thing um, that we work hard to. Like I said, there's a there's a, a higher screening process. It's called our license, right? That license will make sure that you never go hungry. So, and, and we've been through, like I said, I've been in the industry for a long time. People have life things, they quit, whole teams quit, things happen. But the beautiful thing about what we do here is that even if the whole team quits, you're still gonna you're still gonna eat, your family's still gonna take care of because you've got that piece of paper that says you're you're licensed to go out and educate and teach people and, and offer products and services. And let's wrap up with this one. So let's talk about ownership, right? Let's talk about ownership. You guys are here at PHP Agency. Uh, you just got started with us, Chris. You got a nice comma check with us this week, which was in the equivalent of a team of 40 people. Uh, Bill, you made a hundred, you made 47,000 last month, which has been the equivalent of 120,000 clients in your former network marketing company. What would you guys say about ownership? Why, why the insurance industry and more specifically, why PHP agency? Uh, so I, I would say for me, um, you know, we have um, here having now being a co-owner of PHP, um, is it, it, it was the it was the icing on the cake. When I studied at Complan, I went over the, the ownership piece, the equity piece over and over and over again. If you look at some of the people over the last 10, 15 years that have become multimillionaires and you look at how they made it, they owned a piece of a company that, that they were uh, founders of or had equity in and that company went public or got bought out or and, and now their their family generational wealth has been created. Here, ownership is real. Um, and, and it's going to create generational wealth for, for tens of thousands of people. Chris, what, what would you say to that? Yeah, uh, most likely, you know, and that was one of my, that was probably with the icing of the cake with me for, you know, uh, collabing, you know, with, uh, with PHP and the Money Smart Movement is that, you know, when you have ownership, you know, I've been in prior companies so many times that, you know, they're a flash in the pan, you know, and you, you never get all that ownership. So you could spend time, spend years, spend months building companies to the point of they implode because of lack of infrastructure or, you know, they couldn't handle mom uh, the momentum of the teams that you're bringing in. But when you have a solid company like PHP and they, I have a offer like equity, goodness gracious, you know, <laughs> 
that did it for me. And just like Bill said, you know, most of the people, the wealth, wealthy people, they became wealth because they had ownership of something such as, you know, what happened with us that Uber yep. or Lyft, yep. you know, a few months ago, you know, they went public and boom, instant um, millionaires um, right out the gate. So that's what did it for me about for ownership. People are wondering, is, is ownership for real? Let me show you something I'm holding in my hands right now. Uh, my three uh, legal documents uh, by Stradling Law Firm and Cooley Law Firm. I've got three years of stock ownership right here in my hand. I know exactly how many shares I have. I know the, the exercise per share price that I have, the date that I earned, and my vesting provisions. All right, so everybody here that gets stock, it's just not something that you, you talk about. You actually have documentation. It's just not something you, you talk about. Uh, oh, you got ownership and there's nothing really right. to prove it. Here, here we have uh, ownership. So, guys, I, I really appreciate you guys this time. Uh, and by the way, uh, Bill, talk to us about what's going on with yourself, your career now with the Naval Academy, your wife. What, what's going on now? So we, uh, like I said, we, we more than replaced their income. Uh, so when I when I when I left, I started working at the Naval Academy. When I when I retired, and I built this uh, this other company, and before coming to PHP. And so we left that company, so I stayed there. So now we're placing our income. So now I'm done. I'm donating my job, my GS job. I'm donating it to somebody who doesn't understand entrepreneurship. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we need good people you know, working for the government as well. Um, and so, and we've also obviously retired my wife as well. So this is all because of this opportunity here, here at PHP. Hey, for those of you that's watching this show, listen, I'm, a, uh, I'm an eight year Marine Corps veteran. I've been in this industry now for 20 years. I just paid my guys last month, uh, last month's commission, over $830,000 in commissions. Two, two, two of my guys made over $100,000 last month. Six of my guys made over $20,000 last month. 15 of our guys made over $10,000 last month. 22 of our guys made over $5,000 last month. Let me take, take a quick pause there. Because the average income in America is about $60,000 a year, coast to coast. So, uh, you know, because of this opportunity of this insurance industry without recruiting tons and tons and tons of teams by showing them a craft, showing them a business in this field, over 22 of our guys are making more than the average income in America today. Over 51 of our guys made on a part-time basis $2,500, $2,500 last month. Over 119 of our guys, over 119 of our guys made over $1,000 extra last month, part-time. So what that means is, listen, if you make an extra thousand dollars a month part time, you live in the zip code you want. But this is an industry where if people are considering network marketing, although it's a very, listen, it's obviously a solid industry, $30 billion a year is in sales. But I, I just see a lot of people that have a lot of skills and abilities that just aren't rewarded for the transaction ever they put in. Not because they're not honorable people, not because they're not hardworking people. It's just that they don't have enough revenue per transaction for the effort mm -hmm. they're putting in. And, and these gentlemen here have completely displayed that through this conversation, through this video, that if you put your skills into an industry that actually compensates and pays you for the, it, the skills that you learned with inside the network marketing industry, which, by the way, when I was in the insurance industry, I'd be reading books about network marketing because they have the same relative skills about for me. Uh, for me, I wasn't recruiting a team at that time. Now I am. But. Back then, I was recruiting a team. I was recruiting clients. So either way, it's it's always going to be about recruiting, either right. recruiting customers, or recruiting clients. And by the way, uh, who is a former chief talent officer, HR at Netflix. Uh, she she uh, she just wrote a book. We were, we were spending time uh, at the vault with Patrick but David uh, a couple months ago. She said, listen, any CEO that's worth their weight is always recruiting. You're always looking for the best people to be on your team to improve the quality of the service, quality of the environment, quality of the culture, quality of the experience of your customers that do business with you and the people that work with you and for you. And if that's you, you're watching this video right now and you say, man, I want to be the next Chris McCoy. I want to be the next Bill Corman. I want to be the next person in the insurance industry that has a network marketing background and say, you know what? I deserve to be paid what I'm worth and I deserve to be paid uh, for the time that I put into the business. Give us a call. Drop a message in the comment section below. Uh, DM us. Make sure you follow Chris McCoy and we'll make sure you put your Instagram and, and, and uh, information here at the comment section. Same thing too with Lawrence Corman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bill Corman. We'll make sure you put information down in the comment section below too as well as well as the description in the YouTube video. Uh, my suggestion is you reach out to these gentlemen. Uh, Bill's in Annapolis, uh, Maryland, and Chris is right here in uh, our Oak Brook office right here, uh, a suburb of downtown Chicago. So that being said, thanks for tuning in. By the way, I promise you that at the end of the video, in order for you to win a pair of customized Jordans, boom, Woo! right from my desk to your desk, my gift to you, right? Um, we got to reach, we got to reach 20,000 likes on Facebook, 
and 10,000 subs on YouTube. So please, please, would you share this video? <laughs> look, at, look at Lawrence. They're doing this art, right? Uh, share this video. And, and as soon as we hit uh, 20,000, I'm going to give out a pair uh, to somebody on Facebook. Reach 10,000 on YouTube. I'm going to give out a pair to, randomly to somebody that uh, 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 that shares this video uh, from my YouTube channel. So with that being said, guys, thank you so, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much for the comments that we've been sharing here. And thanks for making sure that you're deciding to not only know more, but willing to do more. On behalf of Chris McCoy, Bill Corman, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and you've been watching the Money Smart Woman podcast. Till we meet again. Continue to live smart, smart. continue to love smart, smart, and be, be money, money smart, smart today. today. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate you, bro. Later, Bill.